Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be continuing with my bio statistics series. I'll be taking a past question on um, correlation. If you know you are new to this channel, please kindly press the subscribe button and put on the notification so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. Take that at the look of Pearson correlation coefficient. All right, let's just take a look at this question on the application. Calculate the sample coefficients of correlation between the number of ovulated follicles and the numbers of the eggs laid by a peasant. The data is written on the board. Data of 11 peasants were collected. So you can see the number of eggs, the number of follicles. All right? So the values is given on the board. The first thing that you do as usual is to state your hypotheses and we have two types of hypotheses we have the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis the null hypothesis we always tell you that there is no relationship between these two uh, variables or two data there is no significant difference whatsoever that exists between them while the alternate hypothesis will tell you that there is a relationship between the two variables or there is a significant what or statistical significant what difference that exists between what these variables all right once you have gotten that, you, it's very easy to calculate. Just form your table as usual. Put your x. x is giving the value. You line them here. Let's, have, let's count the number of value from the table. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you put your y there. As usual, this is x squared, which means that any value here, you square it. 37 square, you have this. 34 square, you have this. 33, uh, 52 square, you have this. So the next table, you continue down. The next table is what? The y square. What do you need to do? This is your y. And you are looking for y square. So 39 square, you have this. 29 square, you have this. 46 square, you have this. And you continue down. All right. The next table is x, y. This is x and this is y. So x, y is x times y. Use x to multiply y. So if I use 37 to multiply 39, I'll have this. If I use 34 to multiply 29, I'll have this. If I use 52 to multiply 46, I'll have this. So I'll continue down. Once you have gotten that, you now look for what your sum. The sum of all these values here, which is sum of x, 400. Sum of all this value here, which is sum of y, is 418. Sum of s squared, which is sum of all this value here, you have 17,470. 17470. Why you have the sum of all this value here, you have 17304. The sum of all this value here, you have 16185. Once you have gotten that, it's as easy as that, you just put in your formula. The formula for Pearson correlation coefficient is this. You have the n bracket um, summation x, y. Remember, remember, the reason for all this is that you have them in your formula. So n is 11. Summation x, y. Summation x, y is value is already there, 16185 minus summation x this is summation x here then you have what put the bracket this multiply this since the bracket is attached to each other then summation what y this is summation y there you put your sign then you have a square root a long square root inside you have what your bracket big bracket then you have the n here again then you have summation what x square this is summation x square and the value is there minus now look at this this is summation x but you have to square so this summation x which is 400 you put the 400 inside and you square so you just apply this let's continue on the other board so the formula as stated earlier is n bracket this and we know that the value of this from the table which you can see here is 161185. So n is 11 value. This from the table is this. Now you put your subtraction sign. Now 
summation x from the table, you can see that the portion of, sum, uh, of x is 400, summation y is 418. Because these two brackets, they are attached to each other, you just put your multiplication sign here, all right? Here you put your square root, is there, then you put your the sign, take the sign down there. N is actually 11. Now, because N is attached to this, remember there is nothing, nothing that N is just attached. So you use multiplication sign or just open a smaller bracket inside. Summation S square, you can see, pick it from the table is 17470. Close your bracket because there's a minus sign here. Then there's another bracket here. Now, summation X. As you can see, summation x is here. We know that it's 400. You can also pick it from the table, all right? But they are not asking for summation x. It's summation x, then you now square it. So summation x is 400. You put your square there. Close, close the bracket. Open a new bracket. You have your n value, 11 here. Summation y square from the table, the value is 17304. Then... 17304. There is nothing here. All right. Now, your minus sign, you put your minus sign here. Summation y, which is 1418. Remember, you have to what? Square it, then you close your bracket. Once you have done this, use this to multiply this. You have this. Use this, your minus sign, bring your minus sign down. Use this to multiply this, you have this. Now, put the big square root sign back. Then use this to multiply this, you have this. Square this, you have this. So this is this. This to multiply this is this. You square this, you have this. Put this bracket sign back. So you have this first bracket sorted out. All right? Use this to multiply this, you have this. You square this, you have this, you put your minus sign there, then you have the second bracket being sorted out. Once you have done that, you subtract this from this, you have this. Subtract this from this, you have this. All right? Then subtract this from this, you have this. Remember, this place is actually, since these double brackets, they are actually attached, so this place is actually a multiplication sign. This is a multiplication sign. All right. Now, remember, if you subtract this from this, you also have this. So you have done that. Use this to multiply this. You have this large value, but you have your square root there. Look for the square root of this large value. You have this. So, and if you use this to divide this, you have this. So your uh, value for Coefficients, uh, piercing coefficients of correlation is 0 0.483. Now, after that, what do you do? You look for your degree of freedom. Degree of freedom. How do you get your degree of freedom? It's simple. It's the number of uh, data or values or individuals that, uh, that is being minus 2, which is n minus 2. The number of values we know n is what? 11. So 11 minus 2 is 9. Once you have got it that, now you know that your calculated value, you have it here, is this. Now you check your correlation table. Check your correlation table, it's always easy, but I've checked the correlation table at 0 0.05 confidence level, all right? And you have 0 0.602. Take note, if the calculated value or the absolute value is actually less than the table value or the critical value, you accept the non-hypothesis or the non-hypothesis is not rejected. What does this imply? It simply implies that there is no statistical what, um, relationship, significant, there is no statistical significant relationship between the two variables, between the number of, I'm just telling you the implication of what we just did is that the implication is that there is no statistical significant what relationship between the number of egg that is being uh, laid and the number of follicles in pheasant. All right, it's a very simple process. If you all know you have any question, you can always 
send it to biologyaccess at gmail.com. Please subscribe to support this channel. Thank you.